to prepare for downloading the version of SPSS that I'll be installing in this computer, I need to know information about um, my machine that I've got. So the first thing I'll do is I'll bring my cursor down to the Windows icon in the lower left hand corner of my desktop here and obviously I'm using a Windows based machine. Left mouse button to open up and then come up to the settings icon. Again click the left mouse button to select that and I'll come up to the system folder again using the left mouse button click to open that up and I'll come down to and select about. Now this is a window that pops up that first of all you notice it's Windows 10 so I know what operating system I'm running and also I want to know do I have a 32 or 64 bit uh, processor that, uh, that uh, is being used here in this, this machine. So I come down to system type you notice it's a 64 bit operating system. So I need a Windows 10 64 bit operating system version of SPSS and I will close this. Now one other thing you may want to do to prepare for downloading the software from the UT server is to turn off any antivirus programs you may be running. Sometimes installing software on a machine from a server you'll see the conflict will arise if you have antivirus software uh, that is currently running. Another issue to keep in mind is you should close all other applications uh, that are open on your machine before you actually execute the installation of the software once it's downloaded. But now let's turn to finding the software in the UT server and actually downloading it to my machine. If you have not opened up the internet browser, now's the time to do so. Uh, I will open up Google Chrome as my browser and what I'll do is come to the UT website or if you don't um, have that listed there www.utk.edu gets us to the main university website and we'll, we'll scroll down here to get through to the A, A through Z list of the index for the UT website and I'm going to click on I what I'm looking for is the Office of Information Technology, which it starts with Information Technology, comma, Office, where it's listed under the index here on the UT uh, website. As we scroll down here, what you'll notice is Information Technology, Office of, or OIT. Click on that link, and that brings us to the page for the OIT unit here on campus. Now what I want to do is come down to the software and hardware icon. So click on that to open that up. And we also want to do now is to, this is where we have an option of finding and, and, and downloading software or even finding information about hardware that uh, UT faculty and staff can uh, and students can, can access. I'm going to click on learning about more, learn more about available software and that brings us to the login to download software. What we can do is come up here if we wish on this link and view all software available from OIT. I'm just going to click on the login to download software because I know exactly what I want. And I'll click in the login button again. And now type in your valid UD, UT net ID and also your password and click login. Now you're going to have to identify are you installing the software on a personally owned computer or one that's a UT owned computer uh, since I'm using the machine that provided for me by my department I'll click on I'm installing on a UT owned computer if this is your own machine you would want to click the first option and I will click continue and here we see the list of software that's available listed by the name of the vendor. So quite a wide variety of, of software that can be available to us. I'm going to come down here and find SPSS. Left mouse button click on that. And now I'll come down and here's the list of various versions of SPSS that we can use. 
you notice it has it for the Mac and also for Windows. I've got a Windows machine. Uh, match up whether it's the Mac or Windows what the operating system you're using for the Mac or whether you have a 32 or 64 bit system for Windows. What I'm going to do is install the most recent version which is uh, SPSS 25 versions 23, 24, and 25. Um, there's not much differences for our purposes but I will use the most recent one. Oh, and I notice here that for Mac users there's just one version for uh, SPSS version 25. So if you recall earlier I have a Windows machine and a 64-bit um, processor in my machine. So I'll highlight that but before I do that and actually highlight that for downloading I want to come up here to attention SPSS installation and renewal instructions. I will left click on that and what we see here is a document it's nine pages long that has information about renewing or installing or activating uh, software that you've installed SPSS on your machine and what we'll notice here is that as we move up to the top we can download this information and I will download it and I would recommend you download it and save it onto uh, perhaps your desktop or somewhere where you know uh, it's going to be and as we scroll down here let's see getting around to page 3 yes here it is page 3 uh, instructions and activation codes um, and so this goes through and indicates exactly what you do step by step the most important thing I think is if you come down to authorizing SPSS you'll see that depending upon what version of SPSS you're installing there's a activation code uh, that you may need to access and uh, to insert in an, uh, the user uh, license authorization um, uh, routine So download this file and then we'll come back in a moment and actually download the software itself. After downloading the installation instructions as a PDF file, and you notice here down the lower left hand corner of my screen it indicates that it did save a PDF file. Um, called a PDF, interestingly enough. I could have changed it if I wish, but I didn't. I'm going back to the uh, available software or software distribution uh, page by just clicking the backward button. And again, scroll down to find SPSS. And now what I'll do is I'll scroll down and select SPSS 25 for Windows 64-bit. Right, a left mouse button rather and you notice the first thing here, uh, review the help document, save or print it, which I have reviewed that, and now I'll click on download software. And you notice it's downloading here uh, as it's indicated in the lower left hand corner of my screen. Once it's done downloading, then we'll open it up and execute that exec file and install the software. Once the file is finished downloading from the UT server, go ahead and, and close the uh, browser that you're using to access the server and find where it was saved. I'll come down here in the Windows icon, click to open that up, and again choose the left mouse button for the Explorer where my files are. And I have just saved it to, had it download to the download folder uh, on my machine. So all I'm going to do now is left mouse button and let's go ahead and double click that and it should start to open up the exec file and yes I do want to allow this to be installed on my machine and here it's opening up the uh, installation wizard to continue. Do a quick read of, of course, we always read all the software license agreement. Consult 
your attorney if you have any questions. Click on I accept, otherwise we can't go further, and click on next. Install IBM SPS Statistic Essentials for Python. No, we don't really need that. And click next. Python is sort of an add-on for SPSS, something that we're not interested in at this point. Um, I want to use the destination folder that it has as its default and go ahead and click install. Take a few moments for it to actually install it. Dependent upon your machine may be a little slower. If you have an older machine with a smaller memory. And when you're installing SPSS, make sure you have access to the internet that you're connected, which you need for the license authorization. And right there it has finished. So let's go ahead and click finish. You notice it's it's clicked on start SPSS this is 25 license authorization wizard. I want to authorize it so I can use it. Authorized user licensed, a single copy, which is what we want. It says here you'll need to enter authorization code or license code, which if you recall. I showed you that was contained in the installation instructions that we first downloaded from the UT server. So I'll click next. And now what I'm going to do is open up that file, the installation file, which I already have here, the instructions. I also saved that under download. Open that up. I'll go ahead and um, skip this setup right here. But I'll come down here and I'll find the authorization code for version 25, which is what I've installing here. I'm just going to click and drag to highlight that. Put your cursor over top of it once it's highlighted. And now right mouse click and I'll choose copy. Let's go back to the installation wizard. Now what we notice as we come down here and click on the Windows icon, and scroll down through the list of applications and software that have been installed on this machine. If we come down under I for IBM, IBM Statistics, you notice it's new. I have not used it before. I just installed it. Click on that folder and what we notice here then, IBM SPSS Statistics 25, that's the icon. That's what we'll click on in order to open up SPSS in the next tutorial. So now you've done it. Now you've installed SPSS in your machine and you're ready to go ahead and continue working with the software.